Well, I'm going to speak about uh, another episode of the documentary How Art Made the World. And this episode is named uh, The Art of Persuasion. And it starts with, uh, as an example, with the speech of George Bush in Madison Square Garden in the last uh, elections that he, uh, after then, he became uh, president for last time, the last four years. So uh, they studied uh, uh, people, uh, studied his image and the impression they want him to, to give to the people. So looking on the four previous years, uh, they took the most important moment which was uh, he in, in World Trade Center after the 11th of September, a uh, terrorist attack. And, and he was showing that he was uh, strong and commanding, but also he was caring and warm with the people there. So they thought it was uh, the most important uh, image they want to give about him. So in the going back to to the Madison Square Garden, uh, he appeared alone in the stage. So he appeared alone, showing that he was, you know, strong and he had everything under control. And the position of the stage it was above some people, but also amongst the the whole. Uh, yeah, the whole people that were there, the crowd. So they show him that he was as uh, I mean, they saw him as a powerful leader, close to his people. And so this is more or less an example of the actual way that they use art to to persuade us to do things. But this is not new. So it started long years ago, and um, the first moment it's uh, around Stonehenge uh, because at that moment people were living in small communities but at any moment some of them they have to become together to to create this enormous thing so to to know how they could do it they explain it because they found a, a grave of a man at the beginning they thought it was something about romance but then they discovered that it was a man from 4,500 years ago. And they discovered a lot of things in the grave. And the most important objects were two small pieces of gold that this person was wearing on the head to decorate himself. And they decided, they, they thought that he was a, a kind of a king or the leader who, who were uh, yes, leading the people, the small communities, but then building the uh, stone hedge. So they imagined him like a man with leather cover and, and with the gold objects on, the, on his hair and using, I mean, decorating his body to show his power to the people. And this was the start of a new era. And then after it, another example they give is uh, Darius, king of Persia. And he was the king of, of yeah, Persepolis. Well, the capital was Persepolis, but he was the king of Persia. And he has under his kingdom more than 20 nations. So for the, it started in the, I mean, the kingdom was from the Mediterranean to India. But all this kingdom was under him. So how could he uh, unify all the all this nation? How he how he could be just the king of this enormous uh, space? So he used he write wrote it on on stones different messages, and his messages were were very radical. And he was always talking about uh, to give uh, peace and about the cooperation between all the nations. Uh, one example of the text is, is that he said something like, if there is a war between two of 
the nations. Uh, he would help the, the weakest one uh, because he was there to, to give peace and God, and God had put him to, to provide happiness, to promote happiness around the, the, the kingdom. So another problem he had is that a part of it was a huge uh, space territory. Uh, all of them were speaking different languages. So just only with the messages he was write, read, writing, it was not enough. So uh, in a part of his palace called the Great Hall of Darius, he uh, ordered to, to create some sculptures and the sculptures were people from the different nations under his kingdom uh, with the typical dresses, the national dresses of each nation. So each time one uh, ambassador of one of these nations uh, went to, the, to visit the, the king, he has to pass through all this hall and he saw that the people there were offering uh, presents and giving presents to the king and uh, that they were very happy to have respect to respect him. So that's the way he was giving the image of, of having everything under control and that all the people was happy with his with him, having having him as a as a king. Uh, so this is the it's a way to show the international language of images. And they found in a in the way in a way to Persepolis, they found uh, in a mountain uh, an sculptor that uh, they realized that it was a pol the one of the first political billboard. It was the the grave of the of Darius. So they he appears in the in billboard. Uh, so he appears with an art. And it was the they discovered that the arts was the image that all the all the kingdom recognized because uh, showing him with an art mean he wanted to show that uh, the balance and the control that he has above everything because what well, you know you the people who use an art to throw arrows they have to they have good balance and, and good control. So that was the, the image they decided to use to represent him. Um, and after Darius, uh, the, another example, it's uh, Alexander the Great. So about Alexander the Great, uh, he defeated the uh, Persian army and he wanted to unify all the empire uh, under his image. So he uses his image to, to help him. Um, they wanted to, to, to see how he could, before starting to conquest places, how he could show an image of himself so powerful. Um, so they went to Macedonia because Alexander the Great was from Macedonia. So they went to one of his palaces but most of it was destroyed and all the graves that were in the, in the palace were, were empty except one who, which was underground and it was the, the grave of Philip of Macedonia, the father of Alexander of Macedonia. So, so they found a small pieces of marble and then put it together and they discovered that it was the, the face of, of Alexander so when well, he powerful and attractive, um, and this image was created before the death of Philip of Macedonia. So also before he started to conquest places. Uh, <laughs> so this was the beginning of the political portrait. They also went to uh, Mount Vesuvio, to the uh, old Pompeii, uh, and they found a mosaic in which they saw. Well, it's an image of Alexander in a battle, in the heat of a battle, and Alexander is going to kill the king of Persia. So they saw Alexander with looking at him, very concentrated, very powerful, like a leader, and they saw the king of Persia totally in panic. So they, with this image, they saw that he was invincible. 
and and in this in that moment in the documentary they made a, a investigation to show if what, what is more powerful if to do a campaign with a logo or with the face of a person so they uh, they made up um, uh, I don't know if it was a polit no, it wasn't a political group but I don't remember for what was it but then they make uh, elections so one group was represented by uh, just the logo and the other one with the picture of a man who was the representative of this group and after the campaign they count the votes and 40% of the votes were in favor of the logo and 60% were in favor of the of the face of the image of this of the man. So with that they wanted to show why it was so important. It's it is so important to show the face of someone to convince people and to persuade people. And and Alexander the Great knew that. So he put his face in coins and everywhere to show the people who had the power. And this has gone on until nowadays, because nowadays in the coins, well, for example, we have the king, but with, I don't know, with Franco, we had uh, his face on the coin to show, I'm, I'm in charge of this, so I'm, I have the power. So this is the way to, to not make people not to forget who, who is in charge of everything. Uh, but also, the people has used the image not only for, to show power, or to show the, or to show the truth, the truth but also to, to persuade people to think what they want them to think, not to make them see the, the things as they, as they do. And the first example of this is the em Emperor Augustus in Rome, a uh, civil war in Rome. So they were like Republicans and monarchies divided, and it was... Uh, and uh, Augustus wanted to to unify all of them, and the main problem he had was with the Republicans because he had to show them the image that they wanted, so to convince them that he was good, he was also in favor of them. So he changed uh, several times of image, not changed. I mean, they he ordered to create image of himself, and he was changing it until he. Uh, decided that this image was perfect to to convince both sides that he was good for both sides. So this image it can be this image can be found in the Vatican City in the museums of Vatican City. And in this this image he is with the clothes of uh, like a soldier, but he he is without armament and and without boots. So showing that. He is ready for fight, but he doesn't have arms, and also without boots, uh, to be close to the poverty of the Republican side. So he finally he could get the Pax Augusta, but it was all of this uh, campaign with his image was uh, a lie because after it it became 400 years of dicta dictatorship. So he made them believe that he was good for all of them, but after that, uh, it was shown that uh, it wasn't true, and well, he was martyred. Uh, this has been used for dictators after him. For example, Hitler. He used different images and banners to show people that dudes were less than humans. For example. So they have been used image to, to convince, to persuade people to think what they think. Um, and they say that nowadays it's, it's kind of, it's the same. They, use, they study er, everything and they show people what they want the people think that they are. Sometimes it's true, sometimes not. And that's it. Wow.